In this session, we will solve some numerical sum the regulation of the transformer using EMF, MF, and ZPF methods. The same problem we will solve by all the three methods at a point eight power factor lagging. The statement of the problem is it is a six power machine, 440 volts, 50 hertz, and the rating of the transformer is 30.5 kVA. It is star connected and the armature distance is 0.15 ohm per phase and you have to find out the regulation for all the three different methods that is in mass impedance method, M method and ZPF method. At full load for 0.8 power factor like these are the data given then the for a different value of the field current we have got a Open circuit rotation, then he is not mentioned anything about the, the line value or phase value, then it is treated as a line value, then you have to convert to the phase value, then only you have to draw the curve. Then there is another characteristics that is the short circuit characteristics, that is for a different value of the field current, we have got a different set of the short circuit current. Then, then this data is also required for finding out the regulation by EMF method and ZPF method as well as the EMF method and then the third curve what we need is for ZPF method is that is the field current versus the terminal voltage that is using the ZPF load that is these are set of the voltages there is the one graph between IF and VOC that is open circuit characteristics the second characteristics between IF and ISC that is short circuit characteristics and the third one is between IF that is the field current versus the, the terminal voltage when it is connected to ZPF load. The first step is you have to calculate what are the, the rated current by the rating of the alternator as well as what is the per phase voltage of the alternator and what are the other given data that we will see now that is this is the, the table once again I drawn here that is also I substituted here the previously you have got these are a line value that is this and ZPF voltage are line value now I am converting that into a phase value by dividing root 3 these are the set of the, the values what I am getting for the open circuit voltage as well as a zero power factor load curve. Then you have to draw three curves that is one is open circuit characteristics between IF and EOC. The second way is short circuit characteristic between IF and ISC. The third one is between IF and ZPF voltage that is this curve. These are the three sets of curves are required for uh, the three different method to obtain the, the regulation of the alternator. Then the full load current can be calculated from the KVA rating of the transformer and the terminal voltage that is 30.5 divided by 30.5 into 10 to 3 is the KVA rating that is 30.5 is the KVA then you have to convert into volt address by multiplying 10 to 3 divided by root 3 into 440 so that I am getting the full load current of 40 amperes. Then the rated terminal voltage per phase that is the line value is given that you have to convert into phase value that what I am getting is 254 volts. Then the power factor what is given is cos phi is 0.8 therefore phi can calculate that is 36.86. These are the data you are often used in all the three methods. Okay. Just we look into the R is also given that is 0.150 ohm. Then start with the synchronous impedance. For finding out the regulation using the synchronous impedance, the two characteristics are required. One is the open circuit characteristics, the other one is short circuit characteristics that you have to draw first. That is, I am drawing the, the first open circuit characteristics. Then, with another scale on the y axis, just I draw on the, the short circuit characteristics also I have to draw. This is short circuit characteristics that we have to draw later. Here I am drawing the short circuit characteristics. Then the first step in this particular synchronous impedance method is for rated voltage, 
under open circuit characteristics what is the field current required for the same field current what is the short circuit current when it is shorted that is first what is the rated voltage 254 therefore i am projecting 254 on open circuit characteristics then what i am getting is if is equal to 7 amperes for same field current if the alternator is short circuited what is the short circuit current you have to find out from here that is short circuit current what i am getting is 40 amperes for 250 volts 50 volts of the open circuit voltage for 7 amperes i am getting the 40 amperes of short circuit current when the alternator is short circuited therefore we know the, the formula for the impedance of the alternator that is open circuit voltage divided by short circuit current therefore ZO, zs is equal to voc by isc for the same field current i have got <coughs> xs you can calculate from zs that is under square to zs square minus r square zs can be calculated as it is 254 divided by 40 that is open circuit voltage divided by short circuit current for the same field current of 7 amperes then what i am getting here is zs is 6.35 that's simple for the rated voltage you have to project on the occ note the what is the field current for same field current what is short circuit current you have to find out that is 40 amperes thereby you have to calculate the your zs zs what i am getting is 6.35 therefore you can find out the excess from this formula we know the zs we know the re value therefore 6.38 square minus 0.15 square then what i am getting is 6.348 ohm is the synchronous reactance what i am getting therefore using the formula you have to find out e that is e we know that it is v an angle of 0 degree that is taken as a reference plus i an angle of minus 5 here i am taking minus because it is asked for the regulation for lagging power factor therefore r e plus j axis that is impedance drop if you are adding impedance drop to the v what i am getting is e therefore you can find out what is the value of e by substituting all the value v is 254 that is 254 and 40 an angle of 36.6 is the the current it is a full load current and it is a synchronous impedance therefore we are getting the value of e is 457.4 an angle of 25.88 we are not bothered about the angle right now we are interested in the magnitude of the voltage therefore the percentage regulation is e minus v divided by v therefore what i am getting here is the regulation is 79.93 percent it is a very high regulation so we are getting using the emf method okay then we will look into the the same problem using the emf method how to find out the regulation that is once again the data required here is open circuit characteristics and the short circuit characteristics then the thing is that the first you have to find out ra is given therefore you have to find out the field current required to generate v plus ira cos phi the voltage that is the field current required to generate v plus ira cos phi that is v is 254 ia is the full load current ra is also known the cos phi is given as a 0.8 therefore i have to find out what is the value of v dash the v dash is v plus ira cos phi corresponding to this 258 you have to find out what is the if one 258.8 that you have to project on the occ you have to find out what is the value of the field current that is 8.31 amperes therefore corresponding to v dash the IF1 what I am getting is 8.31 amperes then you have to find out IF2 in a such a way that that is a field current required to circulate full load current under short circuit condition what is a full load current 40 amperes, 40 amperes. therefore 40 amperes you have to project on the short circuit characteristics what is a, the field current required that you have to look into that is field current required to circulate rated current under short circuit condition that is i am doing here that is i am projecting 40 amperes on the 
short circuit characteristics what I am getting here is IFT is 7 amperes therefore I am writing here 7 amperes now you have to add IF1 and IF2 vectorially so that it is IF is underscore root IF1 square plus IF2 square plus 2 IF1 IF2 sin phi then the, the total field current required is 13.7 amperes therefore corresponding to this 13.7 amperes you have to project on the open circuit characteristics that is what I am getting is 328.57 volts what I am getting the voltage here is 320.57 volts therefore you have to write here E is equal to 328.57 and V is 254 then you have to find out the percentage regulation that is equal to E minus V divided by V into 100 so that the percentage regulation what I am getting here is 29.35 percent 29.35 percent it is very simple first you have to find out V dash corresponding to V dash you have to find out IF1 corresponding to full load rated short circuit uh, rated current in the short circuit condition what is the field current required that you have to note down IF2 add IF1 IF2 vectorially based on the given power factor lag or lead then find out the total IF then the total IF should be projected on the OCC so that you are getting the open circuit voltage ok next is the last method what we are looking for is ZVF method here we need the two characteristics one is open circuit characteristics another one is ZVF characteristics first I will draw open circuit characteristics and also I will draw the ZVF characteristics from this data then I am drawing the air line which is the tangent to the initial portion of the, the OCC or unsaturated region of the, the OCC. Next you have to point out the that is from the ZPF characteristics even for the field current of 7 amperes the voltage is 0 means here the current is the field current is 7 amperes whereas the voltage is 0 what do you mean by that what is the meaning of that that is when the voltage is 0 means it is short circuit it is a short circuit is it not voltage is 0 therefore this is the point the corresponding to the current which is circulating under short circuit condition it is full load current however in ZPF curve it is given as 7 and 0 is same as it is a field current that is 7 amperes is a field current required to circulate rated current under short circuit condition ok that we are getting therefore from this characteristics IF2 I am directly getting that is IF2 sorry I am getting here the current 7 amperes that is the base of the, the ZPF curve. Now what you have to do is this is a 7 amperes then this 7 amperes of the, the base can be shifted to any part of your ZPF curve for example I am taking my this the field current which is circulating the rated current under short circuit condition or it is a voltage is zero when there is a ZPF curve uh, load is connected then that is what I am calling here it it is MN MN is nothing but your 7 amperes then from M you draw the the line parallel to the the air line then that you have to mark as a P from P you have to join N then from P you have to drop a perpendicular that is touching the MN at point Q that is a PQ gives the IAXL drop whereas QN gives the the field current required to overcome the R major range means you are separating here IAXL drop separately and you are separating the the field current required to circulate 
uh, to overcome the armature reaction in the alternate. Therefore, what you have to do is you have to measure PQ, then you have to convert into the voltage scale that gives the IXL, then you measure QL and you have to convert to the, the current scale that gives the IF2. I am doing here, just you have to see carefully. That is a PQ I am measure, I am converting into its voltage scale multiplying 47.5 volts I am getting. Then we know the value of the IA, then you can find out what is the XL. IA is 40 amperes, if you are dividing by 40, 47.5 divided by 40, what I am getting is 1.18 ohm. Then NQ, I am measuring in terms of centimeters, then you are multiplying the, the current scale of the X axis, what I am getting is a 6 amperes, that is IF2. Then how to find out IF1? The IF1 is the corresponding to internal voltage of the alternator, that is, it is a terminal voltage plus IARA drop plus IA etc. IARA drop plus IA etc. Then we know the, all the quantity, just have to substitute those values 254 terminal voltage, IA is 40 amperes, phi is 36.8, RA is known, XL is known. Therefore, what I am getting is EA is 289.14, an angle of 6.78 degree. Then you have to find out the I of 1 corresponding to 289.14 from the OCC. First step is complete the Portier triangle, find out I XL, find out I of 2, then you find out EA corresponding to EA of 289.14, that you have to project. 289.14 on the OCC, the field current what I am getting is 8.4, the same thing I am written here. Then once again you have to find out the total field current as in the case of MMF method. Therefore IF is the total current. Then if you are substituting the value of this IF1 and IF2 and the cos phi, uh, phi is 36.8, what I am getting is 12.92 amperes is the, the total field current. Corresponding to this 12.92, 12 12.92, then you have to find out the corresponding voltage from the OCC, that is 330 volts. It is 338 volts. Therefore, the value is E is 338, then V is 254, then you have to find out the regulation, then what I am getting is 33.07 percent is the voltage regulation. These are the this is how you have to calculate the regulation of the alternator. If you look into the summary of the, the regulation at the different loads, in the EMF method, you have got very high regulation. EMF method, you have got a low regulation, whereas the ZPF method yields the, the accurate result that is 33.07. It is treated as an accurate one. Therefore, EMF method has got less than the accurate value, whereas the synchronous impedance method regulation is more than the, the actual value. This is how you have to summarize the, the regulation of the alternator for different loads.